Okay, uh, good morning everyone and welcome to the International Meeting of Water Cities, first edition. Uh, my name is Antonio Prado, currently Chief Digital Officer for this municipality. I'll be the chair of this public session. I just want to offer you a quick look at our agenda. Today's meeting will be comprised of three essential events, a slide presentation about each of the individual cities, a discussion on topics related to local government experiences unique to water cities, and a friendship agreement signing ceremony. Well, there will be a coffee break around 11, don't be afraid. So besides, as you can see, we have a real-time transcription service to help with comprehension. You can follow the stream on that screen over there or on your mobile device by opening uh, the URL, uh, www.streamtext.net and searching for IMWC event. So uh, we'll also publish the minutes of this meeting and this event is being webcast over there. Uh, will be archived and published on the internet for future reference. If you like, you can take photos and post comments on the social networks by using the hashtag IMWC18. Now, having explained all the technical details, I'm glad to introduce our mayor, Mr. Piunti, who will read his welcome speech. Please, Lord Mayor. Grazie e buongiorno a tutti. Grazie per la presenza ai comandanti Granati, Coccia, Morelli. Thank you for the presence of uh, all the uh, high authority of everybody here. Uh, the names, uh, non mi ricordo i nomi, Agranati, Coccia, Coccia e Morene. Ai miei colleghi di giunta, ai tanti consiglieri comunali. Of all my members of uh, the City Hall. Amici delle città d'acqua europee, benvenuti nella città di San Benedetto del Tronto. Friends of the European Water Cities, welcome to the city of San Benedetto del Tronto. Sono felice e visibilmente emozionato per la presenza di delegazioni di città importanti come quelle che rappresentate in questo primo meeting internazionale delle città d'acqua. I'm very happy and excited for the participation of the delegations of important cities such as those represented in this first international meeting of water cities. A nome di tutta la città voglio dirvi grazie per la fiducia che ci avete concesso non era scontata, visto che si tratta della prima edizione. On behalf of the whole city, I want to say thank you for the trust you gave us. It was not obvious since it is the first edition. E voglio ringraziare anche il mio staff che ha lavorato molto e bene per rendere possibile questo evento. And I also want to thank my staff that has worked hard to make this event possible. Il capo di gabinetto che si occupa delle relazioni internazionali, il dottor Luigi Cava. The head of the cabinet Luigi Cava, who is the responsible of the international relations. Il direttore Antonio Prado che ha tenuto i rapporti con tutti voi nelle ultime settimane con la collaborazione di Mauro Alfonsi dell'Ufficio Turismo. The director of Antonio Prado, 
who has been in contact with all of you in the last weeks with the collaboration of Mauro Alfonsi of the Tourism Office. I due Paolo, Forlì e per lei, per la loro collaborazione. Yes. And also for the uh, for uh, the volunteers who has experience in the field, such as Paolo Forlì and Paolo Pelé. Io credo che stare qui tutti insieme è molto importante per la crescita dei territori che rappresentiamo e per fortificare uno spirito comunitario europeo. I believe that being all together is very important for the growth of the territories that we represent and to fortify the spirit of the European community. Tutti noi siamo chiamati ad impegnarci per un obiettivo importantissimo e fondamentale, l'integrazione europea. All of us are called to involve ourselves in a very important and fundamental target, European integration. Un obiettivo che possiamo ottenere mediante l'interazione. A target that we can get through interaction. Conoscerci e confrontare le nostre esperienze è la strada giusta da seguire. Getting to know each other and comparing our experiences is the right way to go. Ed è quello che stiamo facendo in questi tre giorni di meeting. This is what we are going to do in these three days of meeting. I nostri territori d'acqua sono bellissimi, ma anche ricchi di storia, di tradizioni e di tipicità. Our water territories are beautiful, but they are, are also rich of history, tradition and typicality. Le nostre culture, la nostra storia, i nostri dialetti sono diversi ed il nostro compito è tutelare queste specificità. Our culture, our history, our dialects are different different and our task is to protect these particularities. Ma è proprio l'incontro di queste diversità che ci rende più ricchi ed uniti. But it is just the meeting of these differences that make us richer and more united. In conclusione voglio aggiungere una cosa che ritengo molto importante. In conclusion I want to add something that I think it's very important. Questo meeting internazionale delle città d'acqua non rappresenta uno scambio esclusivo di esperienze amministrative. This international meeting of cities of water does not represent an exclusive exchange of administration experiences. Il meeting deve diventare un'occasione di relazionarsi per tutti, cittadini, associazioni, società sportive, studenti, giovani, per tutti, nessuno escluso. The meeting must become an opportunity to relate to everyone, citizens, associations, sports club, students, young people, for everyone, nobody excluded. Il mio sogno, ma credo anche il vostro, è che il meeting delle città d'acqua favorisca questo processo virtuoso di relazione. My dream, and I think even yours, is that the meeting of the water cities favor this virtuous process of relationships. E con il protocollo di amicizia che firmiamo oggi, sigliamo un patto di collaborazione che avvicina i nostri territori. And with the friendship protocol that we will sign today, we take a pack of collaboration that brings our territories closer together. Ho 
Voglio terminare con una considerazione che ho fatto più volte, è che l'acqua degli oceani separa i territori e i continenti. The water of the oceans divide the continents. Ma allo stesso tempo unisce i popoli con la loro cultura e la loro voglia di collaborazione. In our case, water united, unites territories, our citizens, our culture. Abbraccio con affetto tutti voi e i cittadini che rappresentate dei vostri territori. Grazie davvero di essere qui e buon lavoro a tutti. I embrace all of you and the citizens of your territories with affection. Thank you very much and good work. Oh, thank you, Lord Mayor, for your very encouraging words. Uh, this leads us to the first speaker in strict alphabetical order of the represented city. I am very pleased uh, to give the floor to Stephen Vick. De Vrongel from Bruges, Belgium. Yes, here. And also other two members of delegation, Steve and Evelyn. So, uh, Evelyn is going to speak for us. Um, so, Evelyn, um, what about Bruges in 10 minutes? Is it already on? Yes. Yeah, I will try to do my best to uh, tell you the story of Bruges in 10 minutes. Um, Bruges is a uh, a historic UNESCO protected world heritage city in Belgium, Flemish part of Belgium and uh, close to the sea. It's uh, a coastal city, a harbor city and the capital of the province of um, West Flanders. Um, because we believe that um, images say more than words, we have included some short, very short movies. Um, first one showing you uh, completely not classical view uh, of our city, so we shall present it.
th this was a, a very short introduction uh, of our city. As you saw, water is a very constant presence and very important for us. Here you see again the skyline of our city with in the middle the belfry, one of the main Im most important towers of our city. Um, this is again the belfry and also um, our marketplace, central point of the city with the statue of um, Peter de Koning and Jan Bredo, um, some heroes from the uh, Flemish Revolution some time ago. Um, but we are also known for contemporary art, so even though we are a medieval city and often considered as being very classical. Since uh, a few years ago, our um, new mayor decided to invest in contemporary art and we link it to a, a very actual team. This is uh, one of the artworks of this year. Um, it's just finished this weekend and um, it's a three yearly festival. Um, the theme this year is a liquid city, meaning how cities evolve in a, in a changing world where nothing is secure anymore. This is um, a well, as you can see, made out of all sorts of plastic found at um, the beaches of Hawaii and then uh, being put in a sculpture and transport to Bruges. You will see a short movie about uh, artworks. Normally there's music and you will just see how they installed some art pieces on the water. Everything is linked to water and it's spread over the whole city. Is it an installation on the water, on your canals? There are 14 different artworks and it's all on or around the water. Here we are um, preparing uh, a platform in the water where we made it possible for our inhabitants to swim again in our canals. And not only the inhabitants, every visitor. Very important for us for employment and uh, container traffic. It's um, a container port, and we also um, work with uh, gas transport. There, it's a cruise port handling 143 cruise boats a year, and it's also a car handling port. And there's a food activity as well.
yeah, you can here you can see all traffic that is going on from and to the the harbor. We are a museum city. We have 14 um, museums um, up and running, and there's n one um, new site to, to be developed uh, over the next years. We have about one million visitors in those museums a year. We focus mainly on Flemish uh, primitives, but also on contemporary art. There's an archaeology museum, um, a folklore art museum, so it's um, something for everybody. And here's again um, the tower of the Church of the Lady Mary. We are a city as well of chocolates, as you might all know, um, but also it's a very artisan city. We have a lot of craftsmen and we specialize as well in lace. There's also a lace museum. Um, very important is our own, we have a very important brewery in the city. It's called Bressezot, the Bridge Fool. It's really located in the city center, and the bottlery is just outside, about five kilometers away. Uh, two or three years ago, um, the brewery noticed that there's a lot of traffic uh, in the city because of the transport of the filled bottles. So they have installed an underground pipeline and the beer is brewed inside the city and steered through the pipeline underground um, to the bottlery where then the bottles are being filled. It was a crowdfunding activity so every inhabitant could participate in um, funding um, this innovative action and um, I believe if you cooperated for the biggest amount the return is one beer a day for the rest of your life. But we are also a rural city. The link between um, the harbor and the English city center is made of uh, very local communities. This is Lesiri, it's also called, called the White Village. We have there about 2,500 inhabitants. And um, having those rural communities as well poses us to other challenges that we, than the ones we have in the inner city center. Here it's mainly about uh, mobility, reachability, graying population, services uh, that need to be installed locally as well. Um, so it means that we are there with a completely other focus than in the city center. We are as well a beach city. So you see we have about, about everything. It's a very big beach uh, when the sea is, uh, far, is far away. It's about two kilometers to walk to the beach and it's a perfect location then for events. We have festivals there, but also movies on the beach. This is our mayor and uh, the executive council, um, 14 people. And we have a quite stagnant population, about 180,000 people for the last years. And forecast shows that it will stay um, that way. This is um, some parts of our budget. I also want to add that for the last six years, we invested about 70 million um, euros in hard infrastructure, and we will do the same for the next period. And some notable personalities, some Flemish primitive artists, a famous chocolate uh, maker, famous cook. We are known for our Michelin star restaurants in Bruges, so it's very good uh, to eat there. And we have a, a football club playing in fourth division. Uh, first, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and some traditions as well, the procession of the Holy Blood and um, some other festivities uh, were telling as well that the procession of the Holy Blood is also being considered UNESCO World Heritage. And then a typical specialty, it's um, don't tell the Bruges, I don't even have a clue how to say it in English. It's made of uh, brown sugar and we have brought some for all of you, I hope, or you will have to share. But anyway, you will, will be able to taste them later today. And of course, our beers, those we didn't bring, so you'll have to come to our city. And some contact details. Thank you. Uh, I think we all agree uh, this is an impressive uh, presentation, 
but um, that's very interesting. And um, I'll ask you uh, some more later, above all, about your canals. Okay, thank you to our Bruges delegation. Um, now, please welcome uh, Dina Krivina from Daugavpils, Latvia, <coughs> and also Igors and Arthur's delegation from Daugavpils, uh, the second largest city in Latvia. Okay, so, uh, Dina, I, I don't know who is speaking. Dina, maybe? Yes. Yes, of course. Uh, yes, uh, just push the button, the big button, yes. Okay. Now, um, so, Dina, introduce us to your beautiful city. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for uh, your invitation. Uh, it's an honor for us to be here, and uh, uh, I would like to represent our city. We are not a coast the city, it's your city, but anyway, we are, very, we are the richest city in Latvia with uh, lakes. Uh, so Dolgopils is located in uh, Latvia, Baltic Sea countries, and we are very close to Lithuania just 25 kilometers, and you can be in, a, in, a, in another Baltic Sea country. Also, we are close to Belarus, it's 35 kilometers, and Russia is about 120 kilometers um, from our city. Uh, Daugopils is located uh, in the region that calls Latgale. We have four regions in uh, Latvia, and uh, we are proud that uh, we are in the region that is the, the most blue. It's a, we call also it's a land of blue lakes. And the largest lake is in, and the largest and also the mm, deepest uh, Baltic lakes are located in uh, our region. Um, here, of course, also in our city, there are in the territory 11 lakes. Actually, as I mentioned, we are the most, uh, uh, the city with the most uh, lakes uh, in the Latvia. Also, we have two artificial reserves, five rivers, and three ponds. If you see to our uh, history back to 12,075, then it's the beginnings of Daugopils. It was also associated with the uh, Daugava River trade road, which during the feudal times was one of the most important trade roads in Eastern Europe. And also the wave beam is a symbol of Daugava River, and a brick wall indicates the old Dinabur Castle, which gave birth uh, to the city. And nowadays, uh, also, River Daugava plays an important role for the city, but it's not as a trade, as you understand. It's the uh, most um, object for landscape, for tourism, and for uh, environment. And so, also, the aims that uh, we want to strive to achieve in the future is high quality of life and environment, high level of tolerance, and also to become an accessible international center of services and economical development and cross-border center of culture, science, and education. 
Uh, fortress is uh, uh, one of the main objectives, uh, cultural and uh, cultural heritage objects in the city and also in the region. It is um, the only early 90s century fortress in Eastern Europe that uh, remained uh, virtually uh, without uh, changes and the whole area is about 150 hectares. And um, the municipality started uh, to uh, regenerate the fortress territory when there it was possibility to attract uh, European structural funds. And one is the most um, <coughs> important um, tourism objects is Mark Rothko Art Center. Mark Rothko was uh, born in Daugopils. He's famous uh, uh, artist, uh, expressionist, and uh, so we had this uh, possibility together with the children from uh, Mark Rothko. Uh, they, uh, five years ago, the cooperation started about, and now there is center where it's the only one in Europe where uh, you can see the original uh, original pictures from Mark Rotko. And also in the fortress is uh, a very interesting architecture and the facades of the buildings represent the empire style. Uh, in the city there are more about 80 objects that are historical heritage. It's uh, mostly buildings with uh, a red uh, at the castles. And uh, what is uh, unique uh, for our city is a uh, unique sacral place in the city where four, uh, four uh, churches are in the one place. Altogether, Lutheran, Catholics, uh, Orthodox, <coughs> and old believers. <coughs> Sorry, so that uh, symbol for unity and all of them uh, have um, built in the beginnings of 20th cent century. The city is uh, a green. We have uh, more than 30 parks and squares that are uh, very uh, family friendly. And uh, we also want, we also, we like to celebrate and um, this, uh, there are several uh, traditions in the city, and the most uh, popular is uh, city festival that is um, organized by the municipality every year. Also, the new tradition is international festival of the military historical reconstruction, uh, Dinaburg 1812. And also, Ball is a new tradition uh, that is, uh, mm, uh, attracts uh, tourists to Dagopil's fortress. And this year is special for Latvia. We, uh, we are a young country, but uh, so the 100 years celebration is uh, in this year, and uh, many festivals are dedicated uh, for Latvia 100. Uh, <clears throat> about, uh, of course, as celebrations also eating is <laughs> um, one of the uh, traditions and um, traditional food is uh, um, from uh, consist of from agricultural products and uh, with uh, meat actually and um, also fish is uh, commonly consumed but uh, so it's uh, due to the location to the Baltic um, Sea coast and uh, also the uh, rupmais it's a uh, dark bread also typical for Latvia and um, uh, there are uh, some pira dzinja or it's uh, buns filled with uh, uh, bacon and onion for example and you can uh, enjoy also uh, drinks as uh, beer it's traditional beer for midsummer festival and shmakalka is like you are grub I think <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah. Yes, and we have, for example, also Schmackalka Museum, uh, where it's also the history of uh, this drink. 
<coughs> about uh, our council. <coughs> so we have a um, uh, city uh, council chairman and um, Igor Sprelatos, uh, he is um, vice, uh, uh, first vice chairman and also we have two uh, vice chairmen. Uh, administrative structure, uh, so it's under uh, executive director who has uh, have uh, two vice executive directors and uh, there are 15 departments, 67 municipal institutions, 11 uh, municipal companies and uh, private companies. Some uh, data, it's uh, the city has uh, 22 um, square kilometers, population is about uh, 93. Uh, thousand people and uh, municipal budget uh, 120 uh, million euro and uh, most of them are for school educational uh, costs uh, f uh, 43 percentage and also for families solid waste cost municipal police costs about two percentage and cultural costs is about eight percentage and we are uh, uh, internet uh, availability in the country is about 100 megapixels for 95 of population. Mm. So as uh, I mentioned before, uh, the uh, Church of Hills that uh, demonstrates uh, our nationalities and loyalties and uh, the uh, city is very diverse uh, with uh, nationalities and they are uh, Latvians, Russians, Belarusian, Ukrainians, Polish people, Lithuanian, and other nationalities that are living uh, together. <coughs> Notable personalities, as I mentioned, uh, Mark <coughs> Rodko. <coughs> also, we are proud of uh, our uh, Latvian national opera and ballet soloist, uh, Denis Vasilius. Uh, he is uh, uh, skater and uh, participated also in uh, Olympic Games uh, and um, Anastasia Grigorieva, uh, she's also a sportist, four-time champion in freestyle wrestling in Europe and bronze medalist in world championships. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, and also some view uh, to the region. It's um, video, wow. Open your senses in Latgale, the most hospitable region and rich with contrast, where it smells like freshly baked rye bread and a fired up sauna. Here, guests are greeted and the table is set with food and drinks made of century-old recipes that loosen the tongue and thoughts. Here, the view gives way to clear lakes with plentiful fish behind almost every bend in the road, and each small village is adorned with a magnificent church. Here, the ancient and the contemporary live side by side in harmony in architecture, art, music, and people's hearts. All that's left is for you to feel it and experience it. Open your senses in Latvia. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dinah. Uh, just a second. I would like to to ask you uh, because I didn't get it. Uh, what is Marta's bowl? Marta's bowl. Marta. The history of Dolgopil's fortress uh, is connected with uh, Russian Empire, and Marta was. Uh, Daughter of uh, 
What are the empires? But is it um, a game, an historical no. game? No. It's a, like a, a festival, feast, feast uh, for dancing with old, uh, this clothes, this Okay, ball. historical clothes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I understand. So the people are coming with historical dresses and dancing ball. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Dinah. Thank you, Daugavpils. Your city is beautiful. Now, uh, let's jump from Latvia to Finland and discover Porvo. Here we have uh, John Forsman, who is the, the MAC team manager for Porvo. So, who else better than he can explain why UNESCO loves Porvo? Uh, thank you very much for having us here for this beautiful meeting of the water cities. No. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, my name is Jan Forsman. I come from a beautiful little town of Porvo up in Finland. Really small, but oh so beautiful. Let me take you through our little town's a location and then we'll go to some pictures. Uh, we're located here in Finland, uh, close to Helsinki, about 50 kilometers east. So that means that we have lots of visitors coming in from Helsinki for a day trip and so on to, to Porvo. Uh, Porvo is well known for its beautiful old houses, so it's mainly seven, 1700 to 1800 lots of old wooden buildings. Uh, we have uh, basically all these beautiful colors and everything and uh, people often ask that, oh, so you have this nice little museum town, but actually all, all of these houses are inhabited, so, so pe people live here and uh, try to do it in harmony with all the visitors that come in. We have around a million visitors yearly to Porvo, so that's quite a lot for, for a town as small as this. 50,000 people and uh, around, uh, around uh, 25,000 like in the, in the city. It's not only old wooden houses, we also have lots of like sprawling culture events, happenings happening in, in old Porvo. But the nature around, around Porvo is also very important for, for us people tend to enjoy walking around, uh, around in, na in nature and we have a lot from Helsinki to Porvo so you can basically hop, hop on this boat and come to Porvo. It takes a bit, <laughs> a bit more time but it's definitely worth it. Uh, then we have uh, in Pellinki, this is actually not just some cabin, it's uh, Tuve Jansson's cabin in, in Klov Harun which is in Pellinki, and uh, Tuve Jansson if, is of course known for her Moomin, Moomin character, so she, she actually came down here in, in the summer and then just locked herself in this cabin and started drawing and, and writing. There's not very much else to do because this is basically it. There's just <laughs> one cabin and then there you go. You have to create, have to be <laughs> very creative in this environment. The main treat from Porvo is uh, the Runeberg's cake. And uh, Runeberg is our, our national poet, so he was known for, for basically eating these for breakfast. So he always, always needed to have these. And then the story goes that his wife came up with the recipe and she just threw in everything she found in the cabin and then made them look like this, but they could all <laughs> taste, taste very different. 
but the main ingredient which everybody agrees upon is uh, punch, so it has to have punch in it, otherwise it isn't a Runeberg's cake. And then uh, Porvo is mo uh, well, like super well known for its old buildings and its old history, but uh, we have had a sudden surge of restaurants in Porvo, so we suddenly have massive amounts of really, really good restaurants. And the restaurant scene is actually, it's, it's grown in like the last 10 years so much that Porvo is now considered to be one of the top restaurant cities in uh, Finland. We just made the top four <laughs> at least, so that's, that's pretty awesome. Bearing in mind that Porvo is really small. Uh, not only old houses and food, we also have uh, lots of cultural events. This was from, uh, from a little f festival that we made here last summer, or this summer actually, and uh, we basically have this um, art museum that also uh, hosts lots of events, and so we, we just threw up this massive stage on the backyard and then <laughs> threw a good party there and everybody, everybody seemed to have a, have a really good time, so it was a fun, fun summer for us in Porvo. And uh, the winter period is, uh, well, obviously very cold, but uh, <laughs> it's not like this 30 degrees that you have here, but it's something to experience as well. Uh, this is the mayor of Porvo, Jukka Pekka Ujula, and we have a coalition of uh, basically the Swedish-speaking uh, party, then uh, the Social Democrat Party and then the Greens. So we have like, uh, those are the main parties in Porvo. Uh, here's a bit of information about Porvo. It were established around 1380. There, there are actually no, no uh, exact data about that, but around then we started off with a, a tree fortress on, on a fortress hill. And you can imagine what happened to a tree fortress Yes, it burnt down, of course, uh, but now it's uh, the, uh, like this um, area that you, you can basically just go out running and enjoying yourself. And there's always talk about building some kind of replica fortress there, but that will probably not ha happen because of the, the like the na nature aspect of the of the site. Uh, Porvos area is around two two thousand square kilometers, and uh, as I said earlier, we have about fifty thousand inhabitants, and it's been like that for many years, so there's like it's just around this slight positive trend, but but not not that much. Uh, our density is uh, is just one. <laughs> I wanted to pick it up because it's like actually we have quite quite few pe uh, whole, uh, not not that many people on an area this big, and uh, the majority is Finnish speaking, but we also have a minority of uh, about thirty percent of. Swedish-speaking people, which I am, I'm one of one of those people, and uh, the Swedish-speaking minority in Finland is about five percent. So we have qu quite a lot of Swedes in in uh, Porvo, in, uh, in in general. Uh, the reason why we have a, a Swedish minority is, of course, our history that we were part of Sweden for a really long time, and then we were part of Russia as well. And now we've been independent for 100 years, so we also had uh, the last year the great festivities around 100 years of independence, which means a lot to us Finns. Uh, our municipal budget is around 300 million, and we have uh, the reason why it's so high is that we have so many uh, basically infrastructure pro projects running all the time and build it, building up uh, schools and, and so on. And uh, we're a bit, bit on the negative side, but that's the way it is. We will be positive soon, hopefully. Uh, notable personalities in Porvo, our uh, national painter, Albert Edelfelt, lived lived in Porvo and painted there, and uh, as you can see in the middle picture, there's uh, 
actually from up from the Castle Hill, a, a famous painting of his. And actually, the, that same tree is still standing today, and it, the, the, those roots look exactly the same. <laughs> so, yes, so <laughs> that's a bit, a bit of a fun, fun little thing. Uh, then, of course, Johann Ludwig Runeberg, who is our, our national poet. Uh, he was very much uh, Swedish speaking, and uh, in general, you can say that the Swedes taught the Finns how to read and write and so on. So we, we have a lot, lot of like cultural her heritage from that part. And then uh, Ville Valgren, very notable sculptor from, from Finland. He actually, he, he spent a lot of time in Paris, but then of course, living in Porvo, making all these beautiful statues. And then other uh, notable guys, maybe uh, Sami Hyypia, it's well known if you have any football fans around here. And then uh, some wrestlers and riders, and then uh, like local and lo lo local artists and so on. And Porvo actually attracts many uh, artists and uh, painters and, and, and creative types for some reason. It's probably the nice atmosphere we have there that you want to be a part of. So it's quite fun walking around in, uh, walk, walking around in the streets, and you have you have lots of like these fa famous Finnish people going there. So you feel feel a bit like you're in some kind of movie or something. That's, that's okay. Yes. Uh, around a million visitors annually. So there's uh, quite a lot of pressure on the old town having that you know old museum-like surrounding, and then a million visitors. So it's uh, there's a lot of discussions of what, uh, on how we should do things like in a sustainable way. And there's a lot of work and a very active local community in, in, involved in this. So, uh, the places to see in Porvo are obviously the old town, which everybody should see at least once, maybe many times. And uh, of course we have galleries and uh, we are planning on building a new New gallery in Porvo. It's still, still we're still working on it, but we shall see what happens. Uh, the smaller galleries, quite a lot of them. Of course, Runeberg's home. Uh, then Post, uh, Postimäki Outdoor Museum is uh, basically just like this old village from the 1800 Porvo. So that's that's also fun fun to see how how people used to live in back in the days. And those weren't the good old days, I can tell you. Uh, Things to do, explore, enjoy, take a hike, go fish. There's a lot of things to do in Porvo. Uh, getting back to the Runeberg's cake, here was, the, here was the nice little recipe for this one. It's really good, actually. I should have brought them with me here, but, but they would have been destroyed on the, on the way, so you just have to come to Porvo and taste this. And, uh, and another typical dish in, in uh, Porvois fish soup. It's like something everybody must be able to make. Yes. All right. I thank you and uh, welcome you to Porvo. Thank you, Jan. And now we all know why UNESCO is looking at Porvo <laughs> with uh, such an interest. Yes. Okay, so thank you, Jan, for your very interesting presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, now it was supposed to have um, the district of Nisa, Poland, here, but I heard of some unforeseen issue, so uh, they're not with us today, and we greet them. So uh, let's jump from uh, Finland to Poland to meet a great city that has been the cultural capital of Europe in 2016, but not only. So Katarzyna, or maybe Katerina Stepniak will tell us all the other beautiful facets of 
Wroclaw. We are the biggest city of Lower Silesia, uh, Silesia region. We are an uh, economical and cultural and administ administrative uh, capital of, of our region. Uh, Wroclaw has over uh, 650,000 of citizens. We are also a very big city for uh, students because uh, every year we have over uh, one, uh, 150,000 of students in our city. And according to uh, 2018 uh, surveys, in our city life uh, live people from 120 countries. So uh, our main sentence, Wrocław, the meeting place is, I guess, working well. This is uh, our location on the map of Europe. So as you can see, uh, with uh, two hours and 30 minutes, we have uh, uh, easy access to almost every, uh, can uh, every country in, in Europe. This is uh, the um, Cathedral Island. It's the most popular and uh, very top of the attra attraction uh, uh, in our city. And I want to show you something because uh, we are speaking about water today. So uh, as Antonio said, uh, Wrocław was uh, capital of European capital of culture 2016. And one of the biggest show was connected with the river, with Odra River, uh, that was uh, the flow. And I want to show you how it was. As I said, uh, one of the biggest uh, show uh, in, uh, uh, during the European Capital of Culture of 2016 exhibition was stri uh, very straight connected with water because uh, Chris Baldwin, he was responsible for that event. Uh, he uh, used the water, the Odra River, to show how Wrocław was uh, destroyed during the war, then how, uh, it, was re how it was re rebuilt. Uh, so um, many, many of uh, citizens and visitors just could uh, stay on the um, river shore and uh, enjoy the, the view. have problems, as usual. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is the marketplace, uh, one of the biggest uh, market, historical marketplace in uh, our part of, of Europe. And a um, few words more about the city. Uh, as I said, we are one of the biggest uh, cities in, in, in Poland. And uh, what's the very interesting is that uh, you can enjoy the city and visit the city um, staying very close to the river because all the major tourist attractions are uh, very close to the Odra River. We have a long uh, boulevard uh, and you can enjoy the city and the main top attractions just uh, uh, f being uh, also close to the, close to the water. And, and then this is the, the Cathedral Island, the beginning of the Wrocław because uh, on that island uh, everything uh, just, just, just started. 
So the main uh, tourist attraction you can see there is the uh, cathedral church. You can uh, go to the top of the of the tower and uh, see beautiful view uh, of our of, of our city. And this is also very uh, interesting uh, because in Wrocław we, after the um, big. Uh, After the bigger flood in uh, to 1997, um, a lot of um, cities was destroyed in Poland this time. Uh, so we started to rebuild uh, our, our, our city. And one of the um, decisions was made then was to bring uh, the uh, citizens to the city and uh, to give them uh, a lot of opportunities to spend time close to the river. So, as you can see here, this is the one of uh, the city's uh, public uh, beach, beaches in, in Wrocław. You can uh, swim or just take another activities uh, uh, close to the water, of course, with uh, guards. So, so, it's very, very safe and very uh, clean water. So, uh, this is how the, the citizens of Wrocław can spend uh, their time during the uh, spring or summer time. This is also um, one of the most beautiful view of uh, historical panorama of our city. You can see on the left, this is the University of Wrocław, on the, one of the oldest universities in, uh, in Poland. And in front of uh, your eyes, there is a Marina Topac. It's uh, Marina um, when you can rent a boat or just uh, enjoy the, the view of the river. This is uh, how we look uh, new Wrocław because uh, we have to uh, rebuild our city after the Second World War, so there was a lot of uh, free space to, uh, to build new, uh, new buildings or new infrastructure, infrastructures. So this is the uh, Ronald Reagan uh, crossing Main Street in, uh, in Wrocław. And another um, part of our uh, Wrocław life, how, it, how we live uh, close to the river, this is the Dunikowski Boulevard. It was open in 2016, and that was the beginning of our, uh, how we celebrate the re reunion with the Odra River. Uh, we in the City Promotion and Tourism Office uh, invented the new holiday for our citizens and tourists. It's, it's called the Odra Day. And as I said, it was beginning was uh, in 2016. It's day when we uh, or organized a lot of interesting uh, meetings, a lot of activities, sport activities uh, for children, for parents, for all families, for, uh, of course, for everyone. And we just invite uh, our citizens and uh, tourists to join us during the day. This is also opening of uh, summer um, season on, on water. And as I said, one of these boulevards, this is the Dunikowski Boulevard, but we also have um, um, a lot of other boulevards boulevard like this. Uh, they are brand new and you can use a lot of uh, infrastructure like boats or ka kayaks or um, other uh, stuff like that just to enjoy uh, the city from the river. A few m words more about who we are. We won the um, European Best Destination title this year, um, which was the great success, but uh, also we were the Traveler's Choice 2016 by TripAdvisor. And Wrocław was uh, the host, of course, the European capital of culture, but also we have uh, Europe, uh, Euro 2012 in, in Wrocław, uh, football matches. And uh, last year, the World Games, Wrocław 2017, this is the second um, sport, Olymp not Olympic Games uh, event in, uh, in, on the entire world. So Wrocław was the host of that and uh, I also want to 
in, invite you to visit Wrocław because uh, we are speaking now uh, about water and how we can connect the city with the water. So on the left side you can see this beautiful shark. It's a part of our installation in Hydropolis. This is the first and one uh, in Poland, the Museum of Water. When you can uh, see everything about water, how water is connected to our lives. And the right side is a part of our zoological garden. It's called Africarium. And of course, you can uh, see there how uh, life is connected with um, our planet. And of course, you can see a lot of animals uh, from Africa. But also, we have the special place called Odrarium. And it's only about our Odra River. And you can see the um, flora and fauna of that, uh, of that river. So this is the first, and I guess it's only the one place in our country like, like that. This is uh, Mayor of Wrocław, Mr. Rafał Dudkiewicz, and uh, uh, City uh, Council. Mayor uh, uh, is uh, our president of 16 years, but uh, now it's... Uh, his last cadency. So we will, how will, it, how will be next? Uh, as I said, we are the uh, fourth of um, the biggest city in Poland. Uh, the budget you can see is uh, I, one, one million euro, uh, let's say that. And some more information, uh, of course, uh, our history is uh, strictly connected with uh, Breslau, so with the city of Germany before the World War II. So nine Nobel Prize winners was, were connected to, to Wrocław. Uh, of course, then uh, of, we have also this very uh, strong connection with uh, John Paul II. The Pope, he was there uh, in Wrocław in 1997 and he said that Wrocław is really the city of the, the is the meeting place. So our um, slogan, our the main sentence is based on his uh, his words. It's hard to say what's the um, tradition, traditional typical typical dish in in our country because of our history. We have a lot of uh, German and uh, Bohemian influence. Also, everyone in Wrocław is from other part of uh, our country. So uh, our, uh, our uh, regional or typical dishes are very, uh, very mixed and you can really f um, find, find everything you want to eat. Of course, we have also a long history of uh, breweries and uh, this year uh, we can uh, share new uh, beer. It's um, called Shops and it's based on uh, historical recipe from uh, 19th century. This is the uh, movie we create about our city and Odra River. from the first in Poland house on water built by Krzysztof uh, Kamil Zaremba. Enjoy us close to the Odra River. And one more um, about the Odra Day I was uh, talking about. Uh, it's a 2018 edition. 
this is the event we created for citizens and uh, tourists. Over 10,000 of visitors this, uh, this has this event this year. During this event, you can, uh, of course, learn how to uh, react when someone is uh, in not very good condition. Of course, a lot of uh, attractions for kids. Also, we try to learn how to uh, do with water, I mean, how to not uh, pollute it. cooperate with our city uh, institution, of course, also with uh, NGOs and uh, government institutions just to provide us the best we can to our citizens. Again, thank you very much, and I hope we will uh, will be your host in Wrocław soon. So I'm changing my hat now. Um, I cannot present you a city that you already know uh, because in these almost two days uh, you had the opportunity to touch with your hand uh, a little part of San Benedetto, our city. So this is our presentation. Um, I guess you already know where we are now. Uh, this is uh, our weather front, but I told you already yesterday about that. Uh, palm trees and along waterfront, four kilometers. Um, we have also a long bike lane on the waterfront and the seaside. Uh, you told me that you already uh, had a bath yesterday with your swim suite and that the water was warm. We are very lucky with this September 
and we have also an upper city on the second floor of our city. It's our old city. Uh, we are going to visit the old part of our city this afternoon during our time. to you to state your name when you start speaking at the mic. State your name clearly. Okay, so this is the second part of our meeting. We are going to form a panel in order to discuss local government experiences, We're trying to learn from each other some models and best practices. We previously agreed on some topics. Topics are hospitality and environmental sustainability, urban beautification and maintenance, culture and innovation, welfare and youth, sustainable transit, waste, colle waste collection and disposal. So here we have uh, delegates from the cities. I would start with you, Stephen. Uh, we know Bruges is a fascinating city in Flanders. Bruges is known as the Venice of the North. We know Roslav as well. Uh, because of their canals. How close is the connection between citizens and your canals? And how your municipality deals with the canals network. Please, Stephen. Stephen from Rouge. Um, I think the connection between uh, the citizens and our canals is very close because the, the canals are the, the, the vein of our city, in fact. Also economically, it has been important in, uh, in history. Uh, we did trade on the canals. Nowadays, as we mentioned in our presentation this morning, um, we, we, um, we invited people to swim in the canals. It was one of the projects as a part of the triennial we, we spoke about. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Wait a minute. Is it too quick? Do you mean people can actually dive in a canal? and swim and survive? Yes, no, they can. Uh, in the past, it wasn't possible. Uh, it was, as I said, it was one of our projects to get cleaner water, cleaner canals, and therefore we, we made an, uh, an action plan. Um, we, we started with a study, and we have to measure things before we can act. So we did a, it's called a hydronaut study. It's a study about our sewer system. And we saw that uh, due to heavy rains, we had overflows from, uh, from our sewers. So um, to, to start to, to challenge this, um, this difficulty, we um, invested in improving our sewer system we um, started to add oxy oxygen to the water. We got uh, current in, in the canals. And uh, now it's, it's possible to swim. But doing this also made us think as a city about how uh, we are prepared for climate change and the challenges it poses to cities. And therefore, um, we, uh, we are looking to, to widen some canals, to, to even uh, open uh, the canals a few parts, so um, that we are prepared to deal with this challenge. Great. Uh, I think it's a brilliant idea. 
Uh, I don't know if we could reproduce this in our Venice. I don't think so. But, um, but I think you, you can, you already do. I, I saw your canals as well, <laughs> and they are very dry. You are waiting for the rain, I think. So uh, maybe we should communicate to Venice municipality. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I think, yes, uh, the, um, I'm very curious uh, now to hear from another Venice of the north, Roslav, if they allow people swimming in the other river that I have heard has a very low temperature. Hello, uh, I'm Machis Groban from city of Wrocław. So, um, it's a kind of tricky subject, sw swimming in the Odra River, because, well, it's very broad and uh, it can be, uh, unfortunately, a little bit unsafe because of the currents. Um, so we uh, more uh, en encourage people to instead uh, do other sport activities, uh, such as uh, kayaking or um, motor uh, boats uh, or renting a, a, a rowing boat. Uh, <clears throat> what, what is interesting, we have many uh, courses for these sports, so uh, anyone can do, a, um, a, a, anyone can have a course on how to uh, steer a motor boat or make a um, license for, uh, for motor boats and learn how to uh, uh, row the boat because there are many sports associations uh, and um, sports clubs that are present during our events that we held for citizens and for for tourists um, so basically the the preferred uh, way of spending uh, your time over the odra doing sports is probably by boats by kayaks uh, uh, some other equip water equipment. I'm glad that nobody, nobody is going to freeze in the waters, in the waters of other, actually. Yes, I mean, uh, but I think we, we still have, it's not that bad because I think Finland has much colder water, so, so uh, you know, it's not that bad, but uh, yes, uh, it's good that uh, People don't have to freeze in the water. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay, that is uh, really amazing. Uh, however, uh, I think that clean water is the main concern here. And in general, the environmental sustainability of our cities is a common goal. Jan, how do you tackle this issue in Porvo? Hi, Jan from the city of Porvo. Yes. Uh, Porvo is actually going to be a carbon neutral city by the year 2030. So we have quite high, high demands on, on that part. And uh, to, in order to gain carbon neutrality, we have to basically do quite a lot of things to, to get there. And one one uh, thing that is like the most, makes most sense is like, how you warm up your house because obviously we have <laughs> really cold winters in Finland as we have stated here many times now uh, <laughs> we so we need basically that we uh, came up with the idea that okay you have to warm up your house let's start from there so basically we have uh, our uh, city uh, electric company called uh, Porvon Energia uh, the ener energy company they use like uh, uh, eco power for for the like warming up so we have like 90 percent eco power uh, ability right now and we're going to lift it to 100 in uh, the coming five years and the idea is that uh, we basically offer like bio energy to all the houses that are being built in Porvo right now so if you start building a new house then by per default you will get uh, biogas connected to your house if you want to. It's really easy. There's like no, no extra charges or anything. So basically it's, it's made as simple as possible to, to move over to green power. And then you basically just plug in. There you are. 
parade. We have possibilities to, to so go for them. If yeah. I understand correctly, uh, when you start building uh, a new house, you have to uh, respect some, uh, a, li a list of rules, I guess, yes. uh, because of remote heating, um, also um, any other infrastructure uh, needed to, to obtain the goal. Uh, yes, well, orientation of the building, maybe. Yeah, but when uh, there's also like uh, when building new houses, there are like certain rules that you have to, uh, like uh, density of, of the house and, and, and uh, like how much warmth they can emit, like during winter and so on. So there are quite quite tight rules for that. And when we build new areas, it's like uh, we have started building more closely together. So so basically the the houses are, are built more closely together so we can get the infrastructure in there and, and get, get it like done properly from the very first start. Uh, I think that it could be very useful uh, for us uh, to share your results. Did you think of that, sharing data? Yeah, actually we, we have very open, open da data sharing uh, regarding this, especially this project because we, we think that we in order to gain carbon neutrality, we also have to share as much information as possible. So basically everything is open and there's like this uh, database uh, from uh, Porvo and Energia that they basically give out all the information that's possible to give on this project. So, yes. Um, indeed, I think that this is mm, the way to go, uh, build open data and share data. Absolutely. Uh, and I think that the internet is the best tool to achieve that. Mm. So uh, here, in, here in San Benedetto also we have an open data uh, site, website, where we are going to share uh, this kind of data that could be useful for scientists, researchers, uh, but only, not only, but also companies, maybe. Um, uh, it's a good, uh, it's a good trend. Um, open data, mm. open data is the way to go. Yes. Yeah. So uh, one of the most important tasks for a city is to save, is also to save historical treasures. Uh, well, I would like to hear from our Daugav Pils delegates how they deal with monuments and how monuments are treated to attract tourism. So, hello, oh, yes. hello, hello, hello for everybody. My name is uh, Igor Spolatos. I am from Daugav Pils, Latvia, and the first vice man of Daugav Pils City Council. So there's several architectural and historical and cultural monuments in Dagopils. Is the Dagopils Fortress is the one of the most visited and, and interesting. Uh, the NCT for the municipality was the defined the territory of the Dagopils Fortress and uh, as an important part of the urban development priorities by including its own planning documents. So the regeneration project of the Dalgopils Fortress began with the construction of streets, engineering, communications, including lighting, walking, pipes and roads. So the next uh, step was project in, uh, uh, of the street uh, was included the restoration work of the historical buildings. Uh, that had not been used more than 20 years. Also, an important step was creation of the functionality of our historical buildings. The attraction of using structural forms, municipality, implemented uh, several initiatives. One of them, most important project, was creation of the Dagopil Smart Karotka Center. Uh, today is the only place in the Eastern Europe where you have an opportunity to get acquainted uh, with the original works Marco Rotko exhibition by, uh, by veterans and for agents artists. 
Today, Davos Plus Fortress is an interactive space in the city that attracts tourists, artists, uh, researchers, and, and interpreters. It is the main cultural and historical landmark of the Davos Plus and the city symbols. The initiative uh, of the municipality was appreciated by the European Council in 2017 uh, in competition between uh, 13 uh, countries, uh, European countries, the landscape award uh, of the Council of the Europe has been given to the Double Fields Fortress project for the regeneration of the developed symbolic landscape. So this one object uh, now uh, finished the paper project uh, for this building. We are planning uh, to start the uh, construction, maybe it uh, finished on this year or in 2019. This will be a uh, complex of the uh, uh, motor museum. This is filled from the Rigas motor museum. Uh, and um, this is the big territory and uh, we think it will, will be a scientific, uh, the part of the scientific center. So this is the Marcos Bala. Actually, uh, Marcos Bala, uh, for me, is uh, <coughs> a tricky word because ball is the ball of soccer, but also That's wonderful, indeed. Um, I understand that uh, the great effort you put into the Taugav Pils Fortress regeneration to make it a landmark for tourists, because uh, we all know here that tourism is an industry and that it produces welfare for our cities. No. San Benedetto owes a lot to tourism, especially in summer. Our municipality thinks that in summer we should provide more services to residents. Luigi, would you like to explain the reasons for that? The microphone? Library on the beach, eh? closer to reading in summer when the population in town doubles uh, thanks to tourists because we have uh, 47, 48,000 uh, uh, inhabitants and uh, in uh, the summer season, July and August, uh, we are more or less uh, 100,000 persons, and so this uh, uh, demographic phenomenon uh, causes, causes uh, great change in the provision of every kind of services. For example, uh, public safety, uh, bus collection, even planning, uh, rescue checks at sea, and uh, many others. Uh, is a, a, a city that changed completely. 
And um, since summer uh, 2017, in July and August, our municipal, municipal library activated an initiative called the Biblioteca da Mare, is um, a library to love. And uh, a, a section, we started, um, is a section of the municipal library near the beach. And uh, we start we started setting the headquarter in the hotelier association last year, but uh, uh, it became too small. And so in this year, in uh, 2018, we decided to change location and use a larger space near the beach, where we programmed a, a rich program of readings for children. Very, very participated and uh, appreciated. Guests at hotel, the tourists, guests at uh, our hotel in our city can return books to the same hotel where they are. And uh, there are, uh, is a uh, personnel in the comune? Our personnel. Uh, yeah, our personnel uh, go to retire, uh, return the books. See, so get the books. So the idea behind uh, yeah. what uh, we're just saying is to bring the service so. closer to tourists. So. And yeah. not inviting tourists to find where the public library is, but uh, we tried to, uh, to bring the books uh, near the city, near the, the beach, in yeah. other words. And it worked. Where, where, where the greatest influx of tourists is, for us, is the beach. But in your tourist uh, city, it could be another place where there are uh, many people. And we think that uh, could be a positive experience uh, representing a model to sport in, uh, in, uh, in other city. But it's possible that you already have a service like this. In, in Finland, for example, my friend uh, was uh, told me that in Finland uh, there is an, uh, uh, a service, uh, service similar, like that. similar. Mm -hmm. and uh, obviously suggestion, suggestions and uh, for implementing uh, are welcome. Daina, uh, you have a question? Oh, oh Italian tourists, for Italian tourists, yes. Yeah. But uh, this question, uh, well, you have a good point, yeah. uh, because maybe we can think of um, uh, books in other languages. Yes, yeah. yeah, sure. sure. As a tourist, uh, this summer I was in Greece and they also had uh, books in the hotels and it was in English, German, and mm -hmm. so I can use it and I have used this opportunity. We, we, are, um, uh, we are looking for uh, a new location, um, a new location, um, more attrezzata, more. Uh, more books, uh, also digital uh, stream. Yeah. yeah. But this is our second year, uh, this experience is uh, in the second year, and so we uh, need to uh, implement, implement uh, this, uh, this service. Igor? So uh, we have in the city the same experience uh, some years ago. Uh, we was have uh, to put um, old form both and uh, there is uh, a lot of uh, books and everyone can um, go to the uh, phone booth and still get a uh, book free, free access and free access yeah. for, for example for this it will be the cheapest variant uh, to, to use old phone booth uh, to put there some books and every person can take for the link 
of the book go to the beach and they, they will come from the beach to put, and put it in the door, Safran mm -hmm. door. Uh, did they uh, return the books always? Sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jan, Jan, please. Uh, also, like, uh, the, the possibility of uh, libraries is quite quite huge. We don't have this in Porvo, but in Helsinki, for example, you can you can go to a library and you can lend out uh, a guitar or like musical instruments. Uh, they're like 3D printers. So if you have to do some 3D printing, then you go to the library and then you just download something you need to print and so on. So there are quite a lot of possibilities in this. So it doesn't have to be books only. It can be basically anything. Yeah, very good idea. <laughs> <laughs> we, for example, there, there are some uh, popular artists who come to, to the York Beach after he will read this book. Maybe he will put the signature and put it uh, on the bomb and something, some person after maybe one year or ten years, we will see the popular artist uh, signature in this book. <laughs> and then, uh, don't return the book, of course. Uh, Stephen, so you will see it on the eBay. <laughs> yes. Uh, Stephen, would you add something? Yes, I would like to add two things. So we have uh, also the system to, to, to lend books on, on the beach. Possible on the beach, but we focus on our citizens because of the language, of course. Um, and but we also have a, a, a big library in the city center. But on the beach, it's focused on citizens. We have uh, another experiment we did last last years. It is uh, in the neighborhoods. We don't have phone booths anymore in uh, in Bruges, but in the neighborhoods we we, we uh, invite people to share their books. So there's a, a, a case placed on the street, and people can share books, and it's very good for community feeling about um, uh, the community feeling for the people in the city. Uh, so sharing book among blocks. Yes. Wow, that's wonderful. And they return the books as well. Really? Yes. Okay. You also have an experience of counting swallows. Yes, you spoke yesterday uh, about the swallows. I was expecting this question because I uh, wasn't aware of it that it looked that important to you. In fact, it's uh, true as the swallow is a bird that is uh, threatened with extinction, extinction in, uh, in Belgium. We have uh, a, a system of subsidies, I think it's correct. We give subsidies to people who, um, who have nests in their house for swallows. And the, the amount depends on the number of nests you have in your house. But I want to make two things clear to uh, that people uh, of San Benedetto don't think that we are constantly swimming in canals. We are not. Uh, in fact, it is prohibited to swim in canals. Only with the project of the triangle it's, it's possible to do. That's the first thing. The second thing is we are not known for our swallows. We are known for, as a very uh, important <laughs> tourist uh, city. We have over 5 million tourists in Bruges. It makes it difficult to find the good languages for the books as well. Uh, you should try to invite your tourists, your 5 million tourists, to uh, look for swallows as well. <laughs> So, in other words, uh, you are paying people uh, to look at the sky, okay? Um, so, uh, are you counting swallows in Rosla as well? Um, well, I'm, I don't think uh, swallows are endangered species in, in Wrocław, in Poland. Um, but uh, the marine wildlife is very important for us. Um, and uh, in our uh, zoological garden, we have a special pavilion devoted to Odra River. 
Um, apart from from the main uh, attractions of the of the zoo, the um, exotic animals and the, the Af uh, Africarium, which is the uh, exhibition of uh, African uh, marine life. Um, Okay, so <clears throat> so in, in the zoo we have we have four reservoirs devoted to fauna and flora of Odra River, um, which which helps to discover what we have in our city. Not only the exotic species around the world, but especially for young people, for for children, uh, what we have actually in front of our eyes every day in the river. So it's important. Uh, and basically, we want to educate people uh, about environmental responsibility, about sustainability. Uh, obviously, the perspective of, uh, of fish or, or birds uh, in being endangered is very um, threatening in many cases. Uh, and it's often because of our actions, because of our pollution, uh, our impact on climate change, and, and so on. So it is very important to have this, uh, this educational campaign, this, this centers of, of knowledge and education available for all the people to, to learn. It's our responsibility to keep uh, the river clean and safe and, uh, the, and the planet you know, safe and, and clean and, and sustainable. Yes, definitely, uh, because um, I think that uh, speaking of swallows and birds and fish and clean water, uh, it all means that uh, we can control air pollution and pollution, so more swallows, less pollution. It's uh, very uh, connected concept, I guess. So, is there any question from our audience uh, that w you would like to to ask to this panel? Paolo? Paolo Pelle, your experience uh, in Finland about water, can you tell us two words? Yes, hello everybody. I'm Paolo Pelle, I'm from San Benedetto, but I'm strictly linked to Finland, yes. I've been living many years there. I have a family there. And, and I started about 11 years ago a kind of tourism project uh, with Finland, so bringing things to discover our land, our magic land made of water and hills and also mountains. My experience of water in Finland, wow, that it's, <laughs> Finland is made of water, so it's, you, you can find water everywhere, basically. So it's, you imagine the sea, but we should imagine also the lakes. So you have lakes all over Finland. And what uh, was surprising to me from when I came from Italy is that uh, they, they have a kind of uh, uh, double, uh, double way of thinking in that way that uh, for many ways, they are very advanced in technology and in, in internet, in, in all services. But on the other hand, things like to go to the roots, to 
the countryside where they have a very small cottage nearby the sea in Faro or nearby the lake in the inner land. And they, they, they live quite a primitive life without electricity sometimes, without water, without toilets. They just use the sauna to wash up. So it's, for me, it was a shock. So shall we live here without the bathroom? Yes. But well, then when we arrived with my family, with the, with the family of my wife, uh, in the middle of nowhere, basically, we were in the wood. And then I said, okay, and now what do, we, what do we do here? And they told me nothing, we just stay here. So for, for an Italian which is used to, you know, to people, to, to be connected with people, to talk even too much, the idea of being in the nature, that's something that, you know, by the time I learned, because then I've been living there 11 years, uh, so uh, picking up mushrooms and uh, go for a row in the lake, go for a swim, uh, having sauna and then a swim, picking up berries, you know, it's something that it's really connects you to nature in a very, very strong way. So, by my experience, um, this is during uh, the main feast, the main event in our summer, the feast of Our Lady of the Sea. Uh, it's a, a very great feast that uh, lasts uh, for a week, almost, and we have um, lots of events in it. Our food Maybe some one of you already tasted some sea fruits, uh, some fish from our restaurants. Uh, this is a closed sea, the Adriatic Sea. So it's, it has um, a little bit more salt um, of the Mediterranean Sea. So the fish is more tasty. Uh, our surroundings, um, some of these cities we are going to visit uh, tomorrow for who is going to be with us, to remain with us. Um, and now I'm, I'm very excited to show um, a movie about our town, San Benedetto del Tronto, connected to our food. Oh, I'm sorry.
Okay, um, this is a, a movie we presented uh, in Expo in Milan. The theme was food. So, uh, actors were from San Benedetto, directors from San Benedetto, uh, soundtrack from composer by a composer of San Benedetto, and so uh, it's a handmade movie. Okay, you already know our mayor, Mr. Punti, and here are also other executive um, members. Um, some data about us. Um, we have almost 50 hundreds uh, citizens, 50, 50 thousands, <laughs> excuse me. Um, we have um, family and community support costs around six millions. Uh, solid waste costs around 10 millions uh, because we have an in-house company that takes care of our wastes. Um, municipal police costs, we have the chief here, uh, 2 millions. Um, our territory is covered by fiber optics, so our citizens uh, have um, 100 megabit per second internet speed. Uh, personalities, uh, we had some Olympic champions, uh, Carminucci brothers, and also a former president of the Italian Constitutional Court, Capo Tosti, um, a scientist, Eugenio Costa, Coccia, and then comics, artist and painter, Andrea Pazienza, and Miss Europe from 1960, Anna Ranalli. Okay, territory and traditions, we have uh, some museums uh, linked to our culture, tradition, and of course water, the sea. Uh, so, Amphoria Museum, Fish Museum, and maybe you already saw that uh, on our port, Museum of Art on the Sea. Typical dish and recipe. So I already uh, told to some one of you about our stuffed olive. You already tasted our food. Um, today we are going to taste some fish food. Um, the food we saw prepared in the previous movie was our fish soup. And this is the typical dish here in San Benedetto. Uh, fish soup uh, is called brodetto, a little soup of fishes. Wine, um, I would not touch the wine topic because you already know what we are talking about. Uh, last night we had uh, some glasses of good wine from our main sponsor, Choo Choo Winery. Oh, uh, we have also a municipal hymn 
did you? Did you have a municipal hymn? Maybe not. Okay, just give a listen. say visit us because you're already here so um, coffee break anyone okay see you here in 20 minutes for our panel discussion thank you Please. Yes, thank you, Paolo, for your very uh, perceptive <laughs> speech about Finland. Um, I would like to address the thing about the sauna. Still, it, it is—it's quite crazy. We have five and a half million people, and uh, we have two million saunas in Finland. So that's like quite a lot. Uh, um, speaking about this uh, silence that you <laughs> encountered in Finland. Uh, it's perfectly natural for, like, say, two guys sitting in a sauna and not talking for 15 minutes, just sitting there and, you know, staring into the wall. Things like this happen in Finland all the time. So, it, 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 I, I suppose it is a bit of a culture shock in that sense. But uh, Finland is called uh, the city of a thousand lakes. So we have, we have basically endless amounts of lakes in Finland. And water is a very big element in Finland. And, uh, of course, uh, as probably you all know, the, like tap water is among the best in the world in Finland. So basically anywhere you go in Finland, you can just fill your bottle up anywhere and then it's better than, than anything you can get as in tap water. Oh, I mean like bo bottled water. So that's a bit amazing. 
and we really use a lot of time and effort and energy on, on uh, improving our water system, so it's, it stays top-notch all the time. So in that sense, you are very right that Finland has a very special connection to water, and it, it is important for us. Thank you, Jan. So uh, we have another question uh, from a representative of Italian Ministry of Economic Development. The name is Ivo Ceccarelli. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Italy to our special guests from some important European water cities. Thanks to the municipality of San Benito del Tronto for the positive organization of this international meeting. <clears throat> we are representing the me and my colleague, we are representing the local branch of the Italian Ministry for Economic Development, a ministry that has a, cent a central and crucial role for the implementation of best strategies and support for, in this specific case, some of the activities related to water and sea. And this also considering the fact that our public institution collects competencies of telecommunications, foreign trade, and energy. We hope the best results from this event and the good work and luck for the starting new common road and the next meetings and cooperation. And now my question <laughs> is, <coughs> in your opinion, <coughs> sorry, our European water cities could and should live only or almost only for tourism or there's a space in the future for basic economic activities and development? Thank you. Thank you, Ivo. So, who wants to reply to Ivo? Maybe Matthew? So, sh should uh, water cities live only or mainly for tourism, right? Um, well, I believe the answer is no, not only for tourism. I think uh, the, the most basic and the most important thing for any government and, and local community is well-being of the citizens, well-being of the community. So, first we should start with with providing uh, services and best qualities of life uh, for our citizens, and I mean everyday life. So, for example, in terms of the river, I mean, the, the main reason for that is because the tourists uh, and visitors are in a place for just for a few days, few few weeks, uh, and they are passing by. Uh, and of course, it's very important to to be welcoming, friendly, and interesting city for, for tourists. Uh, and it's one of the reasons that we as cities uh, invest in our infrastructure, uh, in beautification, uh, in, all, in providing access to all spaces around the water and all the services. But uh, uh, citizens are living in the place uh, all the time and uh, for uh, their needs are the most uh, important so we uh, instead of asking uh, should we only live for tourists we should ask how can we balance the needs of citizens uh, with the needs of tourists and i think the the, the actions that we do uh, can serve both targets uh, because if you make very beautiful uh, boulevard or other infrastructure accessible for citizens visitors all also will be able to use it or if you create an exhibition about water if you create if you create an event uh, for citizens visitors can also join so it's actually it's actually uh, you can combine those two uh, targets uh, and uh, uh, keep this uh, healthy balance between needs of citizens and needs of the visitors. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, would you have something, would you add 
something Igor's maybe about that? No? Uh, Steven? Uh, connection between and balance between two ways. I think it's the same thing in Buj. Uh, our mayor always says if we do, do good for the citizens, we also do good for the tourists. But we try um, to find a, a balance between doing good for citizens, doing good for the city, and doing good for tourists. As I already said, we have this year more than 5 million tourists, so that, that puts a lot of pressure on the city and the life of citizens in the city. Um, and that's why uh, in, in uh, tourism we try to focus on a, a special type of tourist. We want the, the tourist who comes for culture. That's the one we want and those who stay overnight in the hotel not uh, day tourism, cruise tourism, it's not of our interest because it puts too much pressure on our, on our uh, people. Wait, uh, Jan, please. Yeah, I could actually add to that as well that uh, uh, because we're obviously having the same discussion in Porvo with uh, a lot lots of day tourists and so on coming in and I, I'd say that um, it's super important to have uh, a balance between like tourism and people living in, because uh, in, in old Porvo it's inhabited, so basically all the houses are, are, are inhabited and pe people live, live their, their normal lives and, and so on, so th therefore you have to have a, a very like uh, unique relationship between tourists and, and, and people living there. Uh, then I'd like to add also that we can't live only for tourists because people people still want to see the real thing so <laughs> if they want to go to Disneyland then they can go to Disneyland but if they want a real like Porvo experience then they, it must be a true authentic thing that they're coming coming to see uh, well said I agree and um, I will I would also add uh, about San Benedetto uh, the balance uh, is very uh, tricky uh, because uh, in summer we have um, a lot of tourism as you know but it means that we have a lot of job opportunities for locals so we tried to provide services for tourists of course but also for our residents and we are experimenting uh, some summer nursery for our residents so more job opportunities for residents more services for residents okay so I think uh, we can close the panel. Um, and this is, after all, the goal of this meeting. Uh, exchange experiences, communicate, know each other, and learn, learn, and again learn. Uh, now, you all know that we prepared a friendship agreement. We already shared that with you. I think it would be worth reading the text of the agreement. And then, if nobody has objections, let us proceed to sign it. OK? OK, now I will read the text.
Okay, this is friendship agreement among bodies associated to IMWT. Uh, you see a T instead of a C uh, because we are open to territories. Okay? International meeting of the water territories. Representatives of the EU territorial bodies united by their close relationship with the element water, seas, rivers, lakes. By this agreement, expressed their intention to develop friendly relationships among their territories, promote relationships and exchanges among delegations, improve social, cultural, humanitarian and economic relationships. They firmly believe that an active and profitable interaction represents a fundamental condition for a better and mutual knowledge. Based on this faith, it is agreed and stipulated the following. Article 1. This agreement is based on the awareness of the need to consolidate the relationships of mutual interaction among EU territorial bodies by comparing their respective administrative experiences. Article 2. The signatories of the agreement will pursue the aims of knowledge and development in the following fields, social, cultural, public, education, environment, tourism, sport, public works, urban beautification, urban movement, equal opportunities, productive activities, economy. Article 3, by underwriting this agreement, the signatories undertake to promote initiatives facilitating information exchange among bodies, schools, economic and commercial operators, associations and citizens in their territorial regions. Article 4, the underwriting bodies of this agreement provide the Città di San Benedetto del Tronto with the role to manage the accessions of this agreement. Article 5. This agreement is valid from the date of underwriting and it is agreed on an unlimited time basis. Signatories may freely withdraw from this agreement at any time by written communication with Città di San Benedetto del Tronto. So, any objections? Thank you. <laughs> sure? Okay. So, we can proceed to sign with the sign ceremony. Uh, maybe downstairs? Okay, so, who is going to sign
So, uh, we start by signing the host city will sign first. So our mayor, Pasqualino Piunti, Mr. Piunti, you can sign. Prego. Okay, please, the second one, Bruges is signing Steven Wittebrongel from Bruges. The third one is Brozla, uh, Katarzyna Stepniak. I don't know if I pronounced correctly the surname. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Brozla. And now, Igors Prelatovs for Daugavpils, Latvia. Wonderful. Okay, thank you. As you noticed, uh, we miss uh, Porvo at this time because uh, he is going to sign in the second moment uh, when we, um, we can obtain uh, permission, allowance from uh, his mayor. Okay, so this is uh, the main the main ceremony of our friendship. Uh, now um, there is some gifts. Yes, Daugav pills. Arthur's main photographer. Thank you, Doug Alpils, for your present. Um, Please say thank you to your mayor. And then I see Stephen, something. From Bruges. Oh, a typical dish, typical cake.
Thank you, Stephen. And please say thank you on behalf of our mayor to your council and your mayor as well. Okay, so um, our presence are prepared in a second. Uh, but in the meantime, we can go to lunch. So, I would like to thank you all for this meeting. And I would like to thank everyone. Now we can consider ourselves friends real friends, and now I'm pleased uh, to uh, to invite you for a fish lunch. Uh, and yes, we are going to take a photo all together. I would like to thank you all for having participated in this meeting in San Benedetto de Toronto. I hope to meet again you and other new friends next year. Uh, a special thanks goes to European Parliament, uh, who gave uh, the high patronage for this event, and our main sponsor, that is the winery Choo Choo. Thank you, goodbye, and